we are back in the sure archives where we keep all of our old things like me like michael Pedersen, our historian and what am i talking into right now we are talking into the model 50 it's from 1939 and it's our first ribbon microphone let's talk about a ribbon microphone it's a very simple principle you have a large magnet and then in the middle of that is a in this case about an inch and a half long corrugated aluminum ribbon and as speech and sound hits that it vibrates that ribbon really microscopically it moves in the magnetic field and that creates an audio output they call it a dynamic microphone because it used a magnet so a moving coil microphone is also a dynamic microphone and that goes back to the word dynamo and dynamo was a device that created electricity using magnets I thought that our first ribbon microphones came out in 1951 or 52, uh, because that's when we first called them ribbons. But was I surprised when we opened up the Model 50 from 1939, and inside of it we find a ribbon element. We did not call them ribbons, we called them moving conductors. And for years that confused me, because I thought it was some type of moving coil microphone. Little did I know. So my guess is that we decided to call it a moving conductor for marketing purposes. Call it a ribbon, people might be worried that it would be too fragile. So let's call it a moving conductor and confuse the market and confuse the sure historian. So you might ask about the cardioid, or it's not really a cardioid pattern, the semi directional pattern of this. This did not use the uniphase principle like the unidyne. Basically, what it did is it became directional by simply blocking the rear of the microphone. So at lower frequencies, it's omnidirectional, at higher frequencies, it gets semi directional because of the rear here blocking the microphone. That's all it was. This is just one of 4,000 items we have in the archive. If you want to see more, come back and visit us again.